Good afternoon to all. And we want to take this time to say good afternoon to Liberia and welcome to the media and a snap greeting. So we hope you can capture what we will see from the, the statement. It's intended to reassure the Liberian people, the international community, and the government of Liberia that the assembly will be peaceful and that we don't intend to be confrontational and there is no need to be afraid so we'll turn over to the chairman of the COP and Costa to brief the press thank you very much um, <coughs> ladies and gentlemen of the fourth estate local and international press. Uh, the COP welcomes you to this press conference on the eve of tomorrow's uh, peaceful assembly. We're glad to have you here. <clears throat> Over the last several months, we have been mobilizing peacefully for a show of uh, for a constructive show of our grievances in the form and manner of a peaceful assembly. Uh, on June 7th, 2019, we organized and held the most peaceful protest in the history of this country. Thousands and thousands of Liberians came out from all walks of life and demonstrated their opposition, I'm sorry, their opposition to the grievances in this country. We did not get any results, any results whatsoever from our president after we presented our petition statement to him, demanding that governance and economic reforms be made in order to improve the conditions in our country, which are worsening. We waited patiently for several months and no action has been taken. So we resolved that we needed to come back again in a peaceable fashion, as was done on June 7th, to send another message to the world, one which we believe will not be ignored this time. And uh, the government has tried to push back to prevent, our, to prevent us from exercising our constitutional right. We've been engaged with a joint delegation of ECOWAS and the United Nations. We've met with them. They have facilitated an exchange, an interactive forum between them and, and us and the government. Those discussions yielded no fruits as the government remained intransigent and refused to make any concessions on any of the demands that were contained in our petition statement of June 7th. 
we were willing to make concessions. And it is expressed in a communique that was issued by ECOWAS and the United Nations before they left, that we express our desire to call off the protest if our president could make good on certain uh, of our concessions, of our demands. But the president refused flat out. Instead, the president communicated, he told the ECOWAS and the United Nations Joint Delegation that he will address our concerns in his State of the Nation address, the annual message, which is delivered uh, on the third Monday in, uh, in January of next year. We, we believe that that is unacceptable. Uh, we are working with the international community. We remain engaged with them to ensure that we exercise our rights. I want to make this very, very clear as a clarification. A few days ago, actually yes, yesterday, I was invited by one of the important diplomatic missions in this town to apprise me or inform me that they had taken exception to comments that I made after I was viciously attacked on December 24, Monday. And they believed that I needed to offer clarification so that my comments could not be misconstrued or acted upon by some of our supporters as a go-ahead to cause bodily harm to other people. I want to make this categorically clear that I am a peaceful man. I do not believe in violence. And as has been suggested to me by our international friends, I would like to offer a uh, retraction of those comments and make a clarification that I did not mean for any of our supporters to cause anybody any bodily harm. Even though we are not happy with the state of affairs in the country, but we are Liberian citizens who are entitled to state security protection, unfortunately, that is not what we are getting. We are regularly attacked. Honorable Yeke Kolba's home has come under regular attacks by elements believed to be loyal to the regime. Nothing happens at all. We have been assured in that very statement by the United States Embassy, the European Union, and other international partners. They have asked that we present our logistical plans to the government of Liberia in order for them to work with us to provide us security protection for our peaceful assembly. We want to inform the public in this manner that ever since we communicated with the Minister of Justice in our letter dated November 11, 2019, we informed the minister to which he replied that we intend to assemble 100,000 Liberians to begin to gather at the capital grounds where we, are gathered, where we gathered the first time at about 6 a.m. and we intend our peaceful assembly to last for several days. And we expect people to troop in uh, in different modes of transportation. Some will walk, some will come in buses. We cannot state clearly how each person will come. That is the logistical plan that the joint USA European Union statement has asked us to provide. I want to state to the public that we have ever since provided that. And in the presence of the ECOWAS ambassador, the UN resident coordinator, the president of the Interreligious Council of Liberia, the head of the National Traditional Council, Chief Zanzan Kawa, uh, Minister Musa Dean, head of the government delegation on Tuesday of, of, of this week, informed the body in that meeting that he was going to provide us protection, security protection for our peaceful assembly. He made that open promise to the international community in their presence. In our subsequent meeting, chaired by the Commissioner for Peace, Security and Political Police Affairs yes, yes. of the ECOWAS, General Behanzin, Again, Minister Musa Dean reiterated his commitment to the international community that were we to not come to terms in terms of the ongoing dialogue that was happening, he as Minister of Justice and Attorney General of the Republic would honor his duty to provide us security protection for our peaceful, nonviolent, constitutional 
assembly. So, having said that, in front of our international partners, having supplied him all the logistical information he needs, we believe that all is on course, and tomorrow, December 30th, 2019, we expect tens of thousands of our compatriots from all walks of life to assemble on the grounds of the Capitol building to just express our grievances in the most peaceable fashion. June 7 was praised by local and international friends as the most peaceful protest in the history of this country. I understand there's been a lot of tension in town, threats, attacks, but we cannot allow ourselves to become victims of intimidation, to control to our fears. We must stand up and demonstrate that we are a democratic country and we must do everything to further entrench the roots of our democracy. In a democracy, one of the cardinal pillars to quote the statement by the United States Embassy, the European Union and other international friends, peaceful protest is cardinal to building a democratic culture. It is not war. Nowhere in this world has a peaceful protest caused war. It will be beautiful. We intend it to be a carnival, like a street carnival. There's going to be food, there's going to be music, and there will be uh, a lot of fanfare. That is all that we intend to do. We do not even intend to present a petition tomorrow when we gather. We intend to simply remind the president that we need action taken. That is what we want to do tomorrow. At this point, I want to make it categorically clear that tomorrow's assembly will be peaceful, as was June 7. And I want, I, want, I want to make it very clear, we'll call on all of our supporters, all of our supporters and our sympathizers, continue to conduct yourselves in a peaceful manner. Avoid provocation. Do not engage in heated arguments that have the, pro pro the propensity to lead to physical conf confrontation. Yeah. Remain peaceful because when we are peaceful, we command the respect and admiration and the support of the international community and the mainstream Liberian population. Thank you very much. I would like to stop here for now. Um, thank you. Thank you, Henry. Um, we'll take four questions and then this will be over. Let me take the lady first. I saw your hand. Yeah. yeah, thank you. Oh, my name is LBB17. I report for radio station. Mm. Talking about the attack on the 20th of December at Corina mm. Hotel, that night, the Federal Journalist Association had a debate where the youth chairman for Council of Future mm -hmm. ran in for help. Mm. You went there to rescue you, you took it from there. Yeah. So, have you people suspected anyone? Do you have anything to say? Um, yeah, and, and thank you. On that issue, let me say first a big thank you to the Female Journalist Association of Liberia for rescuing from the hands of the NSA officer, our youth chairman, Ben Toba. He was chased that night. He ran to the Female Journalist Association where they were having that gathering for rescue and they had to rescue him from the NSA people. I was called, I spoke with the Justice Minister and he ordered his men to step down and I went there um, to take him uh, from the female journalist who rescued him. To answer your question, we inquire why Ben Tuba was being targeted for arrest in the night after 8, 9, 10 and all they had to see was mistaken identity. I don't know how that was mistaken identity, but it was intended to arrest him because he is the, the youth chair of the Council of Future. No. Yeah, let me take him from this side. Uh, I'm Rana George, and I report for Smart News Liberia. Uh, Chimekosa, when you first uh, started your campaign, it was all about George we are set up. And now we are talking about a peaceful assembly. What we really cause you to reflect the decision is it because uh, pressure from international partners and other things? 
Well, to answer your question, our decision was made officially to assemble. Our communication, which was uh, uh, drafted and submitted by our Secretary General, who was the acting chairman of the COP at the time when I was abroad, was to ask for security protection for a peaceful assembly. It did not officially say step down. That does not mean to say individual COP members did not say the president should step down. But the official position of the COP has been a peaceful assembly. So there is no contradiction. There is an official and there are individuals who believe what they believe. It is their right on our laws to believe and say what they believe. As long as it does not uh, harm somebody else. That's to answer your question. Mr. Stubblefield? Yes. Yeah. Uh, Jomo Stubblefield from the Stubblefield Report in PHL 17 in Philadelphia. Uh, I guess it's got a two-part question. Uh, I, I get a sense that the, uh, the country is tense. And what can you say to uh, the citizens of the country that may not be coming to the rally that, uh, you know, they're going to be safe? Because I think safety is one of the main concerns of the citizens here. And the second part question is, uh, are you at liberty to tell us uh, what the comments were and what the correction was or the clarification was? Um, sure. Yeah, sure. Let me start with the second one. Uh, on Monday, December 24th, after the Costa show, which I launched a series of playing a tape, an audio of the chairman of CDC, in which he said some very mean and but true things about his stand-up bearer, the president. So I began that series, I call it, you know, the, Mol the, the, the Molufa. And uh, the first day I played that audio, apparently the CDC folks did not take kindly to the content of that. So the moment we went downstairs, my bodyguards and myself, we came under a heavy hill storm of stones that were coming from all directions. Uh, if, if you go down there, you will still see smashed particles of uh, debris of smashed windshield. And I was traumatized. One of my bodyguards was hurt on the head. Uh, he, has, he still has the wound there for which he's taking treatment. I think I would like you to see it. He has to show his wound. Uh, he's still receiving treatment. That's one of my bodyguards. I would like you to capture that, please. And another one was also hurt. And they had knives and they had stones. But for them and God first, I could have been killed. So I jumped into the vehicle. My driver swiftly maneuvered his way out of the parking spot. And we sped off. And whilst on my way to... As far as, way, as far away as possible from the scene, I decided to go on Facebook to do a live video after I had already reached out to Mo Ali, the Secretary General. We reached out to the Minister of Justice. He said he was going to send police folks. And I did a video, shaking, understandably, traumatized. And I said, I have been attacked. And the next time I am attacked, my men will not hesitate to kill anyone who tries to kill me. That's what I said out of self-defense. There was a, on our laws, there's a provision for self-defense. But my comments, when the U.S. Embassy and the ECOWAS, I mean, and the European Union, they said, Mr. Costa, they called me in. I had a meeting with them and they said, look, we are concerned about the comments you made. Yes, we are aware of the attack, but we don't want your comments to be misconstrued by some of your supporters as a go-ahead or a green light to go and harm other people. And I said, you are right. And I said, we would appreciate for you to make a clarification. After I left that meeting yesterday, I did a live Facebook video, the same medium which I used to react when the, ex when the thing took place. And I clarify that and I withdraw that comment because I wouldn't want anybody. So that is a comment that I made that I have ever since retracted. And again, I am clarifying. The first part is, sir, June 7 was very peaceful because there was no provocation. To gather tens of thousands of people in one location and pass off peacefully as June 7th did, it's a beautiful thing. And it happened because there was no provocation from the police, there was no provocation from the ruling party loyalists, that's why it happened. And I beseech my brothers, I beg them, my brothers and sisters on the other side, who believe that all is well in the country, 
who believe that this spiraling inflation, this hardship, this poverty is acceptable? That when you go to the commercial banks to draw your own money from your own account, you can't get it? They think it's okay. I beseech them. Let them stay at home. If they want to protest some other time, they too have the constitutional right to do so. The reason when they gather they are not bothered is because we believe in peace. That's why we do not attack them. And they should allow us to exercise our grievances in the form of a peaceful assembly. So we call on the public, be calm, rest assured, the COP members and supporters are peaceful people and they will conduct themselves in a peaceful fashion on tomorrow and going forward. Thank you. We'll take the last two questions, one from him and you. Then. <coughs> My name is James S. Flomo. I report for Spoon FM and Spoon TV. I report for Spoon FM and Spoon TV. Uh, I'm, I, I'm concerned with uh, the statement that came from the Minister of Justice late yesterday re regarding the protest. I'm, I want to know whether the, the Council of Patriot has been able to re or to go through the Ministry's uh, statement uh, saying there will be no protest until uh, January 30th, 2020. And the uh, independent Council of Patriots has back off, so we want to know the standpoint of the Council of Patriots. Thank you very much, James. Um, first of all, first of all, the Ministry of Justice has already, in the presence of the international community, I told you all, right, has given a commitment that they will provide security protection for us. That communication to which you speak, we do not acknowledge it. In fact, we have not officially received any such communication. We just want to make that clear. We have not been officially communicated with. They cannot show you any letter that we signed as having received. So what we know is that they said in the presence of ECOWAS, in the presence of the, of the United Nations, in the presence of Chief Zanzankawa, in the presence of Bishop Kotu Brown, in the presence of uh, uh, some other officials, uh, who accompanied Musa Dean that they will provide security protection. That is what we know. And so uh, we are assembling tomorrow in a peaceable fashion, and we expect nothing but professionalism conducted by the security forces tomorrow. And just to add up to that, coming peaceful assembly is a right enshrined in the 1986 Constitution of Liberia. And that right to be exercised cannot be deferred by any official of government. This is a right that we have chosen to exercise at the particular time. The only time you can defer that is that if a state of emergency is declared. And in order to declare a state of emergency, mm -hmm. it must be done through the legislature. Exactly. So, yeah. it's just what was almost said. Very brilliant point, Mo. Thanks for bringing that up. The only time a provision of the Constitution with regards to rights of citizens can be deferred or trampled upon legally is when there is a state of emergency in the country. Certain sections of the Constitution can be become suspended. suspended. And to suspend the Constitution, you must go to the legislature where our dear friend, fellow patriot, Honorable Yeke Koluba, of whom we spoke earlier about the sustained and regular attacks on his person, is a member of. Honorable Koloba will tell you that no request by the president has been made to the no, legislature. No. Thank not you. at all. No and, request. And that cannot be done by leadership. leadership. Leadership is in charge now. It has to be done by full plenary. Thank you. The House of Representatives. Thank you. Not the leadership of Buffalo Chimot. It's not possible. <laughs> Thank because you. we are on recess. We only left leadership in charge to Thank you. on their face. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Your question. For yeah. a little bit of <laughs> legislative education there. <laughs> yeah. 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 My name is Lincoln Peters and I report for Smart FM. Mm. My colleague addressed one of my concerns, but the next mm. one has to do with uh, the other day we came here for a press conference when you met with the national government where I they agreed to like provide security for you people. And uh, in that um, particular conference, you stated to us that. Uh, the name of the protest happened <clears throat> that right there from the we are still going to into a peaceful assembly in order for the citizens to be able to petition their government so my concern here is you also said in that same conference that uh, there are certain people within the cop 
who wants the president to step down and they are for the overall you people are just calling for the protest to be peaceful so i want to know who are those members within the cop that wants the president to step down and follow up to my colleague james comment <coughs> i want to know if you people met with the government and other international partner on yesterday to discuss uh about the protest because they were then released from from the justice ministry that we were talking about on the radio and there were so many issues about it so i want to know if you met with them on yesterday thank you very much <coughs> we have not met with the government since when thursday mm. we we have never met the government alone the two occasions on which we've met with uh, 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 government officials, mm -hmm. those two meetings were facilitated. The first one was facilitated by the Inter-Religious Council. Second one was, was facilitated by a joint delegation of the UN and Echo 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 was. Hold on, you want me to answer your question? And we have never contradicted ourselves. Our official communication states our our official position is stated very clearly, unambiguously, in our letter to the Minister of Justice. A peaceful assembly. When we assemble, we express our grievances, we demand answers, we demand action. When you read the ECOWAS's, the joint communique by ECOWAS in the UN, it is stated that in that thing, I think it's uh, the item two, that we acknowledge the general desire to call off the protest if specific action can be taken on some of the governance and economic issues that form the basis of the tension in the country. Those were the exact words. I, I simply reiterated them verbatim. So then they said, also in that same communique, why did they say this first part? Because we express our desire that if the president meets us halfway, if he can make some concessions to you, my dear brother, about the bad economy, the $25 million, the Ministry of Justice said to us that the $25 million investigation is closed, successfully closed, it's over. They said that in the presence of the international community, and we, re we refuse to accept that. So the, the issue here is this, at this point, we're not negotiating, we're not talking with the government. The government has already given us assurances, a commitment in front of our international partners that they will provide security. They said it in front of the UN, they said it in front of ECOWAS, they said it in front of Chief Zaza Kawa, they said it in front of Bishop Kotu Brown. Our witnesses are just too many, my friend. So, to reiterate, never have we deviated, we've been consistent. And you ask about individual members, I don't know them all. There are tens of thousands of people who support the president stepping down, but it is their right. It's a desire. That's their right to say it, to alter this freedom of speech uh, in Article 15. Thank you. Thank you very much, folks. And again, we'd like to reiterate. We, would like to reiterate. we appreciate the press. Thank you very much. You are the watchdog of the society. We look forward to seeing you all out there tomorrow. And the state should provide security for you as well. And it should be a peaceful, beautiful thing. You have nothing to worry about. Senator Darius Zillow just walked in. Uh, Honorable Yeke Koloba walked in earlier. That's Mr. Ben Toba, our youth chair. And so maybe a senator would like to have a... If, if, if you have two more questions, quickly. Hold on, we'll have some more. Yes. Yes, uh, my dear friend from AFP, you want to ask yes. a question? Maybe the senator will make yeah, one or two Yeah, my question was, mm -hmm. uh, how are you saying that this gathering will last for several days? How many days do you think we should have this protest for? Well, it's a beautiful question, uh, but I'll let this, I will defer to the Senator. Thank you. Uh, let me say thank you, and traffic held me up, but I'm here. We are here to assure our people that we are mature people. We are organized. We are responsible. And this is with no intent to disturb the peace protest or peaceful assembly do not bring war. Peaceful assembly guaranteed under the Constitution do not threaten the peace. It is the manner of intervention on part of the government which has been historical that has caused 
peaceful assembly to thank chaotic. John 7 proved otherwise. Once there is no provocation, once citizens are allowed to exercise the fundamental constitutional right to peaceful assembly, for them to petition their government and express their grievances, everything goes well. And we will exercise that right responsibly and in keeping with our constitutional guarantees. We have issues that we need our president to address. And if our president can make a statement in 10 minutes, we're going home. Yeah, but... Uh, that's a key point the Senator made. Yeah. I want to just pick up on that in buttress. Yeah. Senator Dillon said, Representative Yega Kulva is saying, Mr. Mo Ali is saying, Henry Costa is saying, Ben Tokba and all other COP officials and, member, uh, and members are saying, if the, the, the concerns, the issues that affect all of us here can be addressed, that have been put forward, and have been deemed reasonable by our international friends, right? right? Right. They said our issues are reasonable because they negotiated with us before they went to the president and said, this is what we got your people to agree to. Mr. President, can you please take action? Mr. President said, well, I will not do it now. I will do it in my State of the Nation address right. the third Monday in January. So Senator Dillon said, if the president, when we assemble tomorrow, in that beautiful carnival, fanfare, music, a spirit, an aura of patriotism, and the president decides to make a speech, and he does the things that were put forward, which we're not going to go into yet, because he already knows. Right. Trust yeah, me, we will, we will disperse. Yeah, but my question is... Mm -hmm. One more question, please. Yeah, my question, uh, just to follow up my question. Mm -hmm. My question is, according to what you said, uh, you are not going to do petition, only carnival. Yeah, because he already knows. The the look, look, let me, yeah, let's, let's let's know. Know. I got your point. Yeah. We're not petitioning. Most times when political parties want to come together, the first question for you, the journalist, can be, who will hear the ticket? You don't even get a chance to sit down. <laughs> that big, can start to scatter. Yeah. You're concerned on how many days will be in the street, right? Yeah, because he said it. But I responded. If the president can even speak today, we will not get in the street tomorrow. Yeah. Is if he says right? something yeah. in line yeah. with yeah. our discussions with the yeah. government yeah. and our right. international partners yeah. in keeping with our reasonable demands, we are not unreasonable to demand the president to build a, a court to see, to see about risk cases now. No. It is unreasonable. But if the president can make a comment to say the issue about rape on Liberian girls and women, the violence, domestic violence, if we can, that the president can live with the UN that is prepared to help, to say I'm going to live with the UN so that they can fund the construction or the empowerment of a court in that direction, that's something. The city in at the Freeport for which the country is suffering as well. If the president can make a statement, and I'm saying these things because these were the things we put forth to our international partners and the government to take to the president for his reasonable uh, 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 engagement. The president is stuck up. We cannot continue to run the country like this. Are you guys pleased with how the country is going? I'm a senator. I can let it go now. But I can't let my people down. I can let that senatorial job and title and office go now. I will stay with me, Darius Dillon. But what good is a senatorial title and job when the country is going the way it's going? What good it is? So the president, the president took less than three days to fight to resolve the problem between him and Mawa Molu and his party. The president took less than 30 minutes to respond to an audio to which Mora Moru has confessed under the guise of legal talk. Mm -hmm. The president is taking almost forever to speak to us Liberians because he thinks we are, and he believes and feels we are not seditious and bowing down to him. Everybody won't bow down, but he's president for everybody. Okay. So when the president speaks, 
and makes reasonable commitments. We're going home or we will not even get in the street. I hope that answers your question. Yeah, Mr. I'm, I'm Thank you. He first and then you last. Really, really last. Yeah. We have to leave here. Uh, uh, I guess you're not surprised by the tell of media institutions here. Because you are at a post from a few hours ago in Japanese media institutions are receiving money from government, including OKFM. Yes, even your cover with this. Okay, we will deal with that issue later. You will deal with it later? Yeah, sir? yes, we will deal with that issue. Oh no, we will deal with that issue. <laughs> when we we'll finish, we will go to outside. We are all with media. I just saw your man. I saw my man. Your yes, presence, first of all, your presence here today shows that my information was incorrect. So for that, I, I offer my apologies. Okay. Are we cool? Sure. Thank you so much. Sir. Happy or you Thank you. Us? No, the man. <laughs> all the men are my men. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you for coming. And yeah. we, we